Tanzania. In the shadow of Mount Kilimanjaro, the Pangani River is at the centre of a struggle for water. Poor rainfall in recent years has left the land, the dams, the people and animals thirsty for water. Demand is growing, even as supplies diminish. Without intervention, the outlook is bleak. Earth Report investigates the shortages, the conflicts, and the plans to safeguard the health of the Pangani River Basin. Lake Jipe, one source of the Pangani River on the Tanzania-Kenya border, is dying. According to the Global Environment Fund, its water mass halved in the last 10 years. Low water levels and increased nutrients have led to a vast expansion of the typha reed. My first clear memory is from the 1950s. It was a big lake, it was great and there were not a lot of reeds. If you left this place and went just there, you would already be in deep water. I made a living as a fisherman. I caught a lot of fish. There were very few reeds. The change started in the 1970s. The reeds started growing a lot. The lake is so small now, the reeds make fishing very difficult and you can't get many fish. A once thriving fishing industry has all but collapsed. The thick, almost impenetrable reeds now cover 75% of the lake. The limited area available for fishing is difficult to reach. This is the site of the Kirua Swamp, once the largest wetland in the basin. Not only has there been a very limited amount of water available, but the surrounding landscape has dramatically changed. This has led to tensions and conflicts between the communities surviving in this area. Since the dam was built, this area has totally changed. There are now many problems with water. We're thirsty and it's causing fights. When we take our cows to feed, there is no grass, and the cows are dying from starvation. If you look at the land in this area now, it is barren. The government has brought electricity, but I don't get electricity. Electricity is not water. It does not help me, and I don't have the money to pay for it. Before the dam, we got water from springs near here throughout the year. We now have to go to Ruvu to get water, which is very far from here. Both the World Bank and IUCN point to domestic wastewater and industry, including sisal factories, as main causes of poor water quality. For the process of decortication, every hour we need 10,000 litres of water. We get water from the Ruvu River, from Moshi, and after we finish using it, we return it back to the river. The Pangani Basin Water Office regularly tests the water quality. Using their results, they work with industries to identify ways to reduce their impact on the environment. An international group of consultants are training and working with local experts to predict how changes in the distribution of water will affect the river basin. The Pangani Basin Water Office can then balance water supply with water demand. <laughs> 